First things first, what's an SMR? But here is the fun part. Huge, expensive and take forever to build. They're versatile. Pretty impressive, right? Hi everyone and welcome back to All Things Nuclear with Diana. Today we're exploring one of the most exciting energy innovations – small modular reactors, or SMRs. What are they? Why are they so good for the planet? And how do they actually power our homes? Let's break it all down in a way that makes sense even if you've never thought about nuclear energy before. But before we dive in, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell for more updates on the latest in nuclear and clean energy. Trust me, you won't want to miss the exciting topics we've got coming up. First things first, what's an SMR? Think of traditional nuclear power plants like massive skyscrapers. They're huge, expensive and take forever to build. SMRs, on the other hand, are like cozy, high-tech, tiny houses of energy. They're smaller, quicker to build and way more flexible. But here is the fun part. They can still power entire communities. Here is an easy way to think about the power they produce. A typical SMR might generate 300 megawatts of electricity. Sounds cool. But what does it actually mean? Well, one megawatt can power around 1,000 homes in a year. So, 300 megawatt SMR could light up about 300,000 homes. That's like powering an entire small city with just one of these compact reactors. Pretty impressive, right? Okay, so why are SMR such a big deal? First, clean energy. They don't emit greenhouse gases during operation, which is huge for the fight against climate change. And because they're smaller, they can be placed closer to where the energy is actually needed. They're also perfect for remote communities, island nations, or places with smaller grids that can support a massive nuclear plant. Imagine a town in the Arctic or a tropical island. An SMR could keep homes warm, lights on, and even support industries without needing coal or diesel fuel. Now let's talk about fuel. SMRs can use a variety of fuels to generate energy, including traditional uranium fuel, but also advanced options like high-assay low-enriched uranium, HALEO for short. This type of fuel is more efficient than traditional uranium fuel because it has a higher concentration of uranium-235, which means reactors can produce more energy while creating less waste. Haleo also allows SMRs to run longer between refueling, reducing downtime and operational costs. Companies like NewScale and X Energy are using Haleo because it provides better performance for their advanced reactor designs, making it ideal for next-generation nuclear energy systems. Another exciting option is thorium a safer, more abundant alternative to uranium. It's often sourced from mining byproducts of rare earth elements, making it more sustainable. Thorium produces less long-lived radioactive waste, and reactors using thorium are designed with inherent safety features that reduce the risk of accidents. While it's more expensive to develop than uranium fuels, well, because thorium reactors like molten salt designs require newer, more complex technologies. Countries like India and China are investing heavily in thorium because it has the potential to provide a nearly limitless, low-waste energy source. Then there is MOX fuel, which combines recycled uranium and plutonium often sourced from spent nuclear fuel or decommissioned weapons. The advantage of MOX is that it reduces nuclear waste while repurposing materials that would otherwise require long-term storage. This supports sustainability and non-proliferation goals. 
While MOX is pricier to produce than traditional uranium fuels due to the need for advanced facilities and strict safety protocols, countries like France and Japan are already using it because it's an effective way to manage and reduce nuclear waste while providing a reliable energy source. And finally, triso-fuel, a cutting-edge type of fuel made of tiny particles of uranium, carbon, and oxygen. Each particle is coated with multiple layers of carbon and ceramic material, creating a structure that can withstand extreme temperatures and contain radioactive materials, even in severe accidents. This advantage of triso-fuel is its unmatched safety. It's practically meltdown proof and highly resilient, making it perfect for advanced reactors like X Energy's XE100. However, it's far more expensive to produce than other fuels due to the precision manufacturing required for its multi layered particles. Despite the cost, companies are adopting Triso because its safety and durability open new possibilities for deploying reactors in diverse environments, including remote or high-risk locations. These fuels aren't just powering homes and industries, they have future application too. For example, used fuel from SMRs can be reprocessed for other reactors or advanced technologies, minimizing waste and maximizing efficiency. Which fuel do you think has the brightest future? Let me know in the comments. And SMRs aren't just for powering homes. They're versatile. Take hydrogen, for example. SMRs can be used to produce clean hydrogen fuel. This hydrogen can power vehicles, industries, or even flights, like what some companies like FGA are exploring for aviation. Imagine a future where flights are powered by clean hydrogen instead of jet fuel. All made possible with nuclear energy. They can also support desalination plants to produce fresh water in arid regions or provide heat for industrial processes like steel and salmon production, well, which are essential but tough to decarbonize. With SMRs, the possibilities are endless. Another big win is cost and flexibility. SMRs are built in factories like cars, so they're faster and cheaper to produce. Instead of waiting a decade to finish a giant nuclear plant, an SMR can be ready in just a few years. Plus, they're modular. You can start with one unit, power a community, and add more unit as energy demand grows. It's like upgrading your phone, but on energy scale. Now let's talk about safety, something everyone thinks about when they hear nuclear. SMRs come with advanced safety features that make them safer and more resilient than traditional nuclear reactors. By traditional reactors, I mean the large-scale nuclear power plants that have been in use since the mid-20th century, like pressurized water reactors and boiling water reactors. These reactors rely heavily on active safety systems, like pumps and cooling systems that need power to operate. If something goes wrong, like a power outage, it can lead to major problems, as seen in incidents like the Fukushima Daiichi disaster in 2011, where a tsunami caused power outages and cooling systems failures, leading to reactor meltdowns. SMRs, on the other hand, use passive safety systems. These systems don't need external power or human intervention to shut down safely. For example, SMRs are designed to automatically cool themselves using natural circulation or gravity fat systems. If something goes wrong, the reactors can safely shut itself down without external help. Additionally, SMRs are often built underground or in containment structures, making them secure from natural disasters or external threats. 
These improvements dramatically reduce the risk of accidents compared to older reactor designs, such as those involved in events like Chernobyl in 1986, which highlighted the danger of outdated safety protocols and human errors. SMRs are already gaining momentum around the world. Countries like the US, Canada, the UK, and China are investing billions into this technology. Companies like NewScale, Rolls-Royce, and Westinghouse are leading the charge with designs that are efficient, safe, and ready to deploy. If you want to dive deeper into what specific countries are doing to implement SMRs and learn about the kinds of SMRs being developed, check out my previous video here. It's packed with details you won't want to miss. So why are SMRs so important? They're scalable, affordable, and a great addition to the clean energy solutions we need in a world that desperately needs to cut carbon emissions. Whether it's power in a city, a factory, or a remote village, SMRs bring nuclear energy to places it's never been before, and in a way that makes sense for the modern world. Take AI, for instance. The demand for computing power is skyrocketing as companies like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and Meta expand their data center operations to support advanced AI technologies. Data centers require massive amounts of energy to run, and SMRs could provide a reliable, clean energy source to power these energy-intensive facilities. By adopting SMRs, these companies could ensure their growth is sustainable while supporting the backbone of our digital future. If this topic made you as excited about SMRs as I am, let me in the comments. What questions do you have about this technology? Before you go, don't forget to hit like, follow, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss our next video. Together, we are exploring how nuclear energy can shape a cleaner, brighter future for everyone. Thank you for watching.